Even though tools like ChatGPT or Claude have been around for some time now, creators are still using it incorrectly. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use AI as a creator and leverage it to its full potential. Real quick, my name is Eddie and I teach people how to use AI effectively. I've coached over 4,000 students in a program called Income University, also known as AI Income Blueprint. The first thing that we need to do when it comes to understanding how to use AI as a creator is that we need to learn how to prompt AI for better content. People are using AI ineffectively effectively when it comes to their content creation process, whether it's for outlining, creating better blog posts, even their YouTube scripts, everything. You need to learn how to prompt first, and that is the foundation piece of every single AI tool that you use. So essentially what prompting is, is it telling AI what to do in a clear way or format. Good prompts help understand what it needs to do or what it needs to give as an output. So here's a good example of what a good AI prompt looks like. You're gonna wanna write an email to a boss about my upcoming evaluation, which is let's say pay increase. We're gonna use eighth grade reading level and we're gonna make sure that it sounds professional. So just use 120 words, add a little bit of humor saying that you need to feed your dogs and the employment or job is a cashier. So let's say if we put that into Claude or ChatGPT, whatever model you're using, and we're gonna see what the output looks like. All right, so you can already tell this to me is an amazing email to just get started with. Of course, this is just a rough draft, but we have the subject line, upcoming evaluation and pay increase discussion. Dear boss's name, I hope this email finds you well. I wanted to touch base about my upcoming performance evaluation and the possibility of a pay increase. As a cashier, I've worked hard to provide great customer service and keep our checkout lines moving smoothly. I believe I've grown a lot in this role. And then moving on, on a lighter note, my dogs have informed me that their food bowls won't fill themselves. So a pay bump would be much appreciated by both me and my furry friends. Could we please set up a meeting to talk about this soon? Thank you for your time, Eddie. This right here is a perfect example of how you should write your emails or using good prompts. Okay, so now let's say we have a bad prompt example. Write an email to my boss about my pay raise. So let's try this out and see what it looks like. All right, so without any output or context, it writes a straightforward email. I wouldn't say that it's bad, but we are gonna need to add a lot more to this as in a little bit more. Again, I like to have a little bit of humor in my emails. I like to include a less you know, kind of jargon. This is very long for an email. When it comes to prompting, I would say or consider this a generic bad prompt. And if you just try to do a little bit of context, a little bit of humor or whatever it may be, then you're going to get better output every single time. So you know the difference between a good prompt and a bad prompt. And it also kind of determines based on the tool that you're using. Like you just noticed that Claude 3.5 actually asked us what it should include prior to just giving an output. So that it has a big, big increase in better prompt. Thing. But overall, what you want to do for better prompts is you want to always tell AI who it is, what to do, and why. And this also is known as adding role, task, and context to each of your prompts. And you want to give clear prompts because it helps AI write better and also avoid mistakes. And we don't want mistakes because it's also could potentially hallucinate and then add in incorrect details or facts. So this is really important when we're doing prompting. You wanna try different prompts if you don't like what AI writes. So it's not gonna be perfect. Again, AI is just the tool. You're not supposed to use it 100% of the time for every single thing that you do. I love to use AI to help me get in the right direction. And again, one thing that you also wanna focus on is look at the tasks that you already do on a day-to-day -day basis. And are those things that you can outsource? For example, I always outsource my email subject lines. I outsource my blog post descriptions, my titles. Uh, I also use AI for my LinkedIn posts and repurposing content and maybe just doing paragraph by paragraph content optimization. That's really all I like to use it for. But make these prompts and then just add them to a database or your notes app and just keep those with you at all times. The last thing that you're going to want to do in this process is you want to make sure that you're using AI just to learn prompting as well. So every time that you use AI and you like something that it outputs, you can actually save those messages or ask it to create a prompt for you, which we'll get into. So you kind of understand what prompting means, what you're supposed to do first, and what you should do as a creator. It's really important to choose the tools that you need to use for your AI creator business. 
Now you're gonna wanna pick your AI tools wisely. This is so important because I know so many people or so many students that really end up kind of getting stuck at this process because they think that they need every single tool under the sun, but it's not like that. You wanna just start off with one or two tools so you don't get confused. You wanna choose the tools that fit what you need, like writing, making pictures, coding, whatever it may be. You wanna look for tools that are easy to use and also have really good instructions. Try free versions first before you even buy a tool. For example, I love using Claude and Claude has been my go-to for literally everything I do, which is blogging, YouTube scripts, outlining, emails, newsletters, everything I can think of. I've been using the free version of Claude for over like six months and now I'm on the paid plan and it's an amazing tool. I also use Canva for my image generation, AI editing for images, like removing backgrounds, adding things to the background. You really wanna just have like a few tools in your tool stack. There's a lot of creators out there that are also using like automation tools like make.com, which can plug and play Claude, Canva, and other tools if you have it for your business. Now, most importantly from this whole process is that you wanna just choose tools that are comfortable for you. I know so many creators that really dislike Gemini and they love using ChatGPT and they don't understand how to use Claude. So just go with the tool that you like and become a master at that one or two tools. Now that you've chosen the tools that you really want to focus on, it's important to continue using your prompts and fine tuning them for each tool that you use. So this is going to be a lot simpler when it comes to making your work and productivity faster is that you're creating system or smart prompts. So find tasks that you do over and over again in your day to day business and then save those prompts into a place like Notion or Google Sheets. This is really key when it comes to optimizing your time and also just leveraging this to outsource to your maybe VA or someone else that you're working with. What we like to call is system prompts is what you are able to kind of copy and paste into your AI tool. And then system prompts will kind of generate the same response in a different topic when you save it as a prompt, which I'm going to show you right now. But for example, the output was exactly what I needed. Create an advanced system prompt out of this output to get this output every single time. Make sure that you give it a role, task, and context, but it needs to be general for any topic. Then just keep up your prompts up to date and working well. So let's say that I really enjoyed this prompt here, which again was the one that added humor about the pet or you know the furry friends. Now, if I really enjoyed this prompt, I can go ahead and use that uh, output that our input that I said for the example, and we're gonna see if it can create a role, task, and context for us. So we can go ahead and save that into our database. So it looks like it's doing it. So it's creating an advanced system prompt for us. It's giving a role, a task, and context. You are an expert content creator specializing in crafting personalized professional communications for various purposes. General customized content based on specific user requirements. So of course, produce the content in the requested format, adjust the writing style to match specified reading level, add a little bit of humor while having a professional tone. Here is the context. So these may include target audience, word count, we have the output format as well. Then last but not least, we also have the user request. So this is just an example where it says, write an email to my boss about my upcoming evaluation. And this is just as a request. So you can change this to whatever your topic or email is. For example, like let's say you're doing it for outreach, B2B work or anything it may be on a different type of industry. You can just copy and paste this to your niche. So now that you kind of understand how that process works for saving your own system prompts, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and add these to Notion, your own document or notes app, Google Sheets, whatever it is, go ahead and start saving all of these prompts. So I have a bunch of YouTube prompts, which allows me to work more efficiently. I have a script outlining prompt that gives me ideas. I have a chapters prompt so I can create my own chapters and make it actually useful for my audience, which is you guys. I also have you know YouTube shorts, script prompt, a blog post to YouTube video or YouTube video to blog post outline prompt. I have a YouTube intro prompt. So I have all these different prompts that I'm currently saving. As I start to collect these, I, I just add them into Notion and you can add them to whatever tool that you're using, but just make sure that you're saving all of these prompts.
problems. From there, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're getting better every single time when you're using AI. So again, one thing that I keep telling everyone is please don't rely on AI 100% as a creator. You still need to add in that extra personal experience and information that AI just wouldn't know. You can add the context in there, but just continue making it better. So look at what AI makes and see how you can improve that and you wanna edit the output. Keep track of all of the prompts that work well and the ones that don't. So you can only make sure that you're using the ones that are actually helping you with your creator business, whether it's your emails, your YouTube channel, video ideation, whatever it is, just go ahead and start saving all of those prompts that are useful. You can continue learning new ways to use AI, but ju by just literally using the AI tools. Sometimes people get overwhelmed and also feel like they need to try out every single tool. But I would say the first thing that you wanna do is get the one or two tools that you're using first, become a master at that. And then once you've leveraged those tools, try to jump onto another tool that can help you in another part of your business. For example, there's a YouTube tool that I like to use sometimes for my other channel, which is called Subscriber. They have a YouTube script outlining process, which also does the research and all of those things. And I just started recently using that after I learned how to use Claude and ChatGPT and Canva's AI tools. So just try to kind of take action instead of overwhelming yourself. So this kind of leads me into that example of just try new AI tools very carefully. Just get really good at one or two tools before trying any new ones. And for example, you want to test out new tools with small, easy projects first. So don't just go diving into like a Upwork job or let's say you're a freelancer. Don't just start testing AI tools with your clients. You need to actually get really good at it and then start leveraging that for your business. So now that you understand like the tools and the prompting and things that you need to do as a creator, you want to keep learning, but also just keep on improving and making as well. You want to set a time set aside some time to learn about AI and try new things. You want to set aside some time and learn about AI and just try new things. You can try using AI for a bunch of different parts of your business. So like I said, make sure that you list down everything that you do in your day to day tasks and see what you could outsource. You want to see what you can do in real projects as well. So let's say you're a freelancer, you're a copywriter and you want to use AI efficiently, then just try little things with real projects right away. You also want to join communities of people who are also using AI tools and you can share ideas with these people. For example, I'm in a community with over 4,000 students where we're leveraging AI. There's a bunch of other creators out there that are doing amazing things with like make.com, chat GPT, and there's just so many different ways you can leverage AI. So just join other communities and see what people are doing so you can kind of put that into your tech stack. You could also write down what you're learning about AI and share it with others. This is exactly what I'm doing with this YouTube channel where everything that I do as a creator, I'm also finding ways to kind of leverage AI to help me with little parts of my creator business. I'm training that with you because as I teach you, I learn more as well and I can save all of these things for documentation. So just try to keep getting better at AI overall and join communities. So you know that you can join communities. It's really important that you become smart when using AI. For for example, think about what's right and what's wrong before you start using these tools. You don't want to just go ahead and lie about these tools if you're using it for a freelance job or if you're using it in your work workplace. You want to make sure that you understand the right and the wrong ways to use AI. You need to be very careful when it comes to like really weird things using like AI image generators. You don't want to use it for the wrong things. You also want to tell people that you're using AI in your workplace. And this is just to be more transparent. Most companies or most freelance jobs don't really care. And they will also tell you beforehand, you can leverage AI if you need to. Some people even have their own AI internal systems. So as long as you're just transparent about this or don't apply to jobs or don't do creator work if it says no ai just please be careful with that you want to make sure that your ai still sounds like you so from here you can create like your brand voice leverage ai tools for your business and go from there just know the rules about using ai in your job and this is going to help you kind of make sure that you're in the right spot when using these tools so you learn how to use AI, you learn how to prompt, you learn what you should be doing in the right and wrong things when using these tools. You wanna to make sure that you always stay ahead and you want to create system prompts for everything that you do. Other than that, 
you want to keep learning and be getting better with artificial intelligence. I recently created a video tutorial on how you can use AI for writing blog posts, for using prompts correctly in your content or long form content. You can actually watch those two videos next. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.